Oh, hello YouTube. It's me. I'm back. Um, I lied. I'm not doing an edited video for a few days at least. So you're going to have to put up with me doing another off-the-cuff chat. It, it doesn't hurt though, does it? I, I, I was hoping to have a bit more men momentum. I'm doing quite well though, right? Um... I don't want to blow my own trumpet. I'm just checking in with whoever's whoever cares. Um, so I'm uploading like snippets in shorts, right? I'm doing videos. They're not really well edited, but they're snippets from the AI videos that I've I've been doing about geometry. So, um, and then I've got these longer videos. They're they're all less than. Well, it's less than two months. I've only been doing this for several weeks, right? So all of my videos recently about geometry, if you've got the time, please go and check out, check them out. I don't expect you to listen to my long waffles. Um, these videos are quite short. 15 minutes, I think, is the longest one. Um, you know, and forgive me if you think this is boring what I'm doing now. But until I've got more momentum, I just don't think it's worth my too much of my time doing loads of highly edited videos. I may as well keep them. And while whilst whilst that you know I'm working on that, um, I'm going to continue to set the stage um, for our discussion, right? And that's what I am doing. I'm setting the stage talking about all of the relevant aspects of the geometry. And there are so many angles to come at it, right? There's the mystical, there's the metaphoric, there's, there's, you know, there's the mystical, there's the metaphysical, and then there's the scientific. And then there's all the branches of study that lead into, you know, you can come at it from so many ways. There's literature in the Bible, there's classical literature, there's architecture, there's the arts, um, fashions, history, you know, a lot of history, a lot of the classical philosophy comes from a place, that logical thought comes from a place of understanding the geometry and, and the maths. Um, I, don't, I don't want to go too, on too much about that. Someone sent me this picture today. Thanks for that. I, I used to love Jimi Hendrix. Um, this was when the subject became what we're discussing. The geometry became very, very fashionable. Although it was perceived through the lens of psychedelics. So mix in drugs, psychedelics and religion. And what do you get? <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of interesting ideas. Um, I've got a bug today. Oh. I've got a bad throat, so forgive me. I, I think I might have burst out coughing in a minute. I had a takeaway over the weekend. I had a couple of deliveries of food, and which is great, you know, getting food delivered to you. But unfortunately, I, they delivered something else, an unexpected package. So I've got a bug. Anyway, the 60s. Um, I will be honest here. When I was a young lad... I part partook and and took some hallucinogenics. You know, all, all of the psychedelic fractal imagery from the sixties and the psychedelic era is exactly linked to our discussion of geometry because there you know th th there is literature it was fashionable um, subjects from, you know, religion, UFOs, all of that, psychedelia, you know. Um, I'm not promoting that. I'm not, I'm not dissing it either. It's just, you know, it is what it was. You know, it's fashionable. Um, there's... So, like, you know, there's not too much symbolism here, but there, there's a bit of symbolism in this picture, right? You've got the rising sun and you've got the rays of the sun. So, you know, we're talking about the age, 
dawning age of Aquarius, age of Aquarius, age of Pisces, um, and the you know all the astronomy to do with that, right? Ties into our subject of a an ideal world. A you know it's a, a it's a the symbology of a new sun rising into a new age is a utopic vision. Um, the symbology is of that of a utopia, right? A new age. So there's you know astronomy there's there's information to do with astronomy that you can you can come at it from that angle, right? It's what I'm saying. Different branches of inquiry. Um, we're not going to do too much about the astronomy. We're going to cover stuff though. Um, so. Then in this picture, you've sort of got Jimmy with the in Indian gods, right? So what we're talking, with, with the pan pantheon of gods, doesn't matter what religion it is, um, whether, you know, it, I did a video yesterday, right, about the names and sounds of God. Biblically speaking, the names of God, um, it's to term, one term for it is the Ella, Elohim. Well, that's the numbers of God, right? Numbers and names of God. Because in the ancient world, in the Hebrew language and the Greek language, names had numerical correspondences. So the names of God in the tree of life, right? Um, I'm, just, I'm just touching on it, right? I don't want to explain anything too deeply to you. I'm talking about the different connections and different religions you have different pantheons. So in the Christian, you know, in Hebrew, well, it's Elohim, names of God. There are numbers that correspond to that. In different religions, you have different pantheons. Um, in, in Greek architecture, the pantheon's on top of the building, right? In that triangular shape. Um, so in Hindu temples, a, Hindu, a classic, classic in Hindu temple, Involves the same geometry of squaring the circle, a union of heaven and earth, and then there's other, there are other mathematics, there's other, there's more, you know, other elements to the temple. Um, does that make sense to you? I, I mean, I get it as an architect, right? You know what a pantheon, is, pantheon is, right? Pantheon in a temple is that piece, you know between the columns and the roof that shapes the roof right well that's where the, that's the dwelling of the gods right in this picture there are seven snakes it's number seven in christianity you know it's mary is associated with number seven often in greek it's athena i don't know what it is in hinduism the gods have corresponding numbers, is what my point is. In Christianity, it's slightly different. It's the names of God, because we're talking about different religions. But the same pantheon, if you like, the, the numbers 1 to 12 are pivotal to our discussions. That number 12 comes into astronomy, the measurement of the heavens, the gods in the pantheon. It's not always 12, and it's not just 12, but 12 is a prominent number in that, in those lines of inquiry. So is number 7, but there is a relationship between number 7 and number 12, right? And there is, in, a, in the canon of proportion, in canon of number, the different numbers in that canon have their different corresponding go gods or animations, if you like, of God, if you want to get mystical. We're not going to be too mystical on this channel, though. Although we will talk about the mystical symbolism. Uh, I hope I haven't waffled on too much there. This is what I wanted to cover today, though. Um, the Tetratus, right? I wanted to talk about this. And, you know... I know I keep saying I'm going to do highly edited videos, but I will do.
but there's lots to discuss and I, and I can't make all of my points on edited videos because they take so much time. So the only way I can do it for the sake of the channel and for the sake of anyone who's following, if you've got the time, I need to lay down some basics on my channel as a point of reference. So today we're going to go into a Wikipedia page. Um, I know it's Wikipedia. There's nothing wrong with Wikipedia in my eyes, though. Look, I know people can add to it, and it's not the truth, but there's a lot of truth. It's good to use, as, in my opinion, I use Wikipedia for a lot of reference, referencing, you know, just fact checking. I always, double, you know, I'll, I don't use it as my main source of uh, research, though. Anyway, I digress. The Tetratus, right? You know what the Tetratus is? You should do. I've been banging on about it, right? That's the ten dots from the Greek, from the it's the Greeks, well, especially Plato, his teachings, and the Greeks' right teachings. Tetratus is the equilateral triangle with ten points. Um, it's ten dots. So we're just going to read through the Wikipedia, right? If it's boring and I make mistakes and I stumble, forgive me. This isn't rehearsed. Let's see if we can move through it quite quickly, right? Though, right? Um, for the sake of not boring you to death, the Tetratus or Tetrad, or the Tetratus of the Decad, is a triangular figure consisting of ten points arranged in in four rows. One, two, three, and four points in each row. With its geometrical representation of the fourth triangular number, as a mystical symbol, it was very important to the secret worship of Pythagoreanism. There were four seasons, and the number was also associ associated with planetary motions and music. Right, so number one, the monad, number two, dyad, number three, triad, number four, tetrad. Right, so pause that if you want, read it, contemplate. The four rows add up to ten, which was unity of a higher order. The decad, the tetratus, symbolises the four classical elements, air, fire, water and earth. The tetratus represented the organisation of space. The first row represented zero dimensions, a point. The second row represented one dimension, a line of two points. The third row represented two dimensions, a plane defined by a triangle of three points. The fourth row represented three dimensions, the, a tetrahedron defined by four points. So it ties in with our creation myth, right? And in, in, in the you know development from the Vesca Pisces of, of our of our fundamental shapes. There's a comparison you can make mentally, right? So, anyway, I don't want to prattle on to you about much. I'm not a Pythagorean, by the way. And I'm not going to pray to Pythagoras. But a prayer to Pythagoras, right? Do you want to read that? I don't particularly want to. Um, I have actually read it. Um, so, it's relevant, right? Plato mentions many times the numbers 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. It's easy as A, B, C. Um, it's a thing called... A holy, the whole, the whole of holes, what Plato used to talk about as well, the whole of holes. And I've, through my contemplation, that whole of holes is a, you know, th th that, that structure, that net of the tetratus. I've spoke about the lens of, in the Vesica Pisces, right? This shape has got the geometry from the transition of two-dimensional space into three-dimensional space, right, through that lattice geometry that's contained within an equilateral triangle of the tetratus, right? And that rhombus shape is important, that, that, that this net grid you can make, right? Um, you can discover this in the Hebrew tree of life, in the Kabbalah, that's a different, slightly different system, right? Hebrew system. This is we're on about the Greek, the Greek system of maths, right? But 
the reason there are you can compare with Hebrew as well. They obviously have a common origin, and you get to the same sort of you, you develop a, a cosmology that's slightly varied, but it's the same structure, right? Very, very similar. I hope that makes sense. Um, so this is the connection with music, right? I'm not going to get bogged down. I'm not. I'm, unfortunately, I wish I was musically gifted. Um, so let's not go down the musical line of research at the moment but you are welcome to read that and pause that and consider it a part of the video because i will reference it but no i'm not going to go in into it at the moment the tetratus also known as the decad is an equilateral triangle formed from a sequence of the first 10 numbers aligned in four rows it has both a mathematical idea and a met metaphysical symbol that embraces within itself in seed-like form the principles of the natural world the harmony of the cosmos, the ascent to the divine and the mysterious of the divine realm. So revered was the ancient symbol that it inspired ancient philosophers to swear by the name of the one who brought this gift to humanity. No wonder um, even a brekkie like me can gain high vision through this research, right? Even me. Yeah. Um, and I failed at school. I got kicked out of school. I didn't completely fall at, fell at school, though. I did continue my education, and it hasn't stopped. That's another story. You don't want to know too much about my um, questionable past, so. Um, we will get there, right? I've referred to it a few times now. Plato's ideal city, or the high vision of St. John and his vision of Zion, his vision of the New Jerusalem, right? The high vision, really, and it's enough. You can look at it mystically, and I have. But there's mathematical information to be gained from it as well, right? And metaphysical contemplation. But that high vision, we will we will get to that point. And this, you know, it, we will call it, and it is called in the literature, Plato's ideal city. And biblically, it's, you know, the imagery and the symbolism of St. John having that vision of the new Jerusalem descending. And, and and all the measurements are there now. I, I do urge you, if you've got time, go off and look at... It doesn't take too long, right? Just for a future reference, right? Because we will be... Or, or just wait and we'll be covering it in the videos. But the measurements of the city in the Bible of St. John's vision of the New Jerusalem um, well, explains a giant cube, the precise measurements of it. It's not just a cube, though. It's round. And that's the city of Zion. But the, the meaning of the symbolism of having a high vision is in, in the Bible, often on a mountain, and even metaphorically in literature, right? Just having the high vision is, let me look, let me put it this way. I've mentioned this once more before, and I'm sorry I'm waffling. Of the capital on the hill, a, a vision of a, of a utopia, right? A high vision. One term of it is a capital on the hill. And that's got biblical connotations. It sort of links to, you know, the new world symbolism in America. You, 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 I'm, I'm just hoping anyone that's following is sort of aware of that. If not, I'm sorry. Um, and I don't want to get too mystical. <laughs> but, you know... I don't like the term mystical. But there is revelation to be had for our investigation of the equilateral triangle. But it's, you know, and, and the, what we're talking about with our 
canon of proportion is about the harmony in, you know, the harmony of the shapes, basic shapes in geometry and the proportions, right? The ancients had a far deeper way of looking at us. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat. I was talking to this about talking about this to my friend and he said, Oh, we were talking about the ancients and the numbers and everything. He said, Oh, they had too much time on their hands, didn't they? And they did, that's the point, right? They had all the time in the world. And uh this might sound a bit cliche, but look, this is the study of and it links back to the development of the measurement systems they use to measure time, right? So um it's it's humorous, right? It's funny, it's interesting. Um I'm trying not to cough at the moment. I've got a horrible chest. Um the ten points in the Kabbalah tree, right, without getting too into it, you you know, i we can all read, can't we? Right? So you know, you don't want to listen to me reading this, right? I just wanted to touch upon the subject. There's not too much here now. Look, we've got down to the bottom of the page. I wanted to touch on to the Tetratus, put it down for reference, right? So we've covered it um, and I've done that. So have a powerful day. We'll continue on the other side. Speak to you then.